What's good, CBT fam? Before y'all get into the video, make sure y'all hit that subscribe button and that post notification bell to get notified every time I upload content. Peace. What's good, YouTube? It is your boy, Big Cool, coming to you from Colossal Boxing Talk. Colossal Boxing Talk is associated with Three Kings Boxing under the movement umbrella, and I am back with another video, as you all can tell by the title. This is the breakdown prediction of this weekend's WBA Ring Magazine lightweight title fight between two-division world champion Vasil Hitech Lomachenko, who will be moving up and attempting to win his third different world title in a different world uh, in a different weight class. Excuse me. And you have the reigning WBA and Ring Magazine lightweight champion Jorge Linares, um, who. Is attempting to pull off of what a lot of people would consider a major upset. Let's look at the pros and cons of both fighters. First up, Jorge Linares. Ultra talented. Extremely fast hands. Very good power. Um, he's very athletic. He can do a lot of stuff in the ring. Um, he's a tremendous fighter. Way back, what, a few years ago? More than a few years ago. He was touted as being, you know, what a lot of people consider Vasil Lomachenko is today, or maybe to a slightly lesser degree. But he suffered some setbacks. He's lost three times in his career. He's lost to Antonio DeMarco, Sergio Thompson, and I forget the uh, other guy. Um, all those have been by stoppages. And when you look at Jorge Linares, for a guy that that's as gifted as he is, he's very hittable. You know what I'm saying? He's hittable, and he cuts easily. If you look at the Antonio DeMarco fight, God, it looked like he had just been in a fucking horror movie. You know what I'm saying? He was cut bad, blood dripping everywhere, which forced the uh, referee to stop the fight because DeMarco was coming on strong. Um, Jorge Linares can be somewhat of a, um, a quick starter, but, you know... It, sometimes it takes him a while to get in his groove and expect him to definitely be cautious with Vasil Lomachenko. In order for Linares to be successful, he's going to be able to have the time encounter Vasil Lomachenko. And as talented as Jorge Linares is, he lacks one thing that you really need to be able to compete with Vasil Lomachenko, and that is the footwork. He tends to be out of position when he punches sometimes. Uh, he's not always in position to, you know, get out of the way on defense. And we all know that Vasil Lomachenko has extremely fast feet, um, good foot, great foot placement, you know what I'm saying, great lower body movement has extremely fast lower body movement. The way he's able to shift from one side to the other, turn his offense to defense, defense to offense, is a thing of beauty. And if Lenarius cannot counter and time him and not keep up with him um, by using his footwork, it could potentially be a long night. Now, yes, all, although he lacks the, the foot movement, Necessary to beat a Vasil Lomachenko, or at least do what you would like to give his, you know, give him much better chances. He does make that up um, with extremely fast hands and good power, as I mentioned early. But speed without timing and accuracy doesn't mean a damn thing. He's gonna have to be able to sit in that pocket at times, take what Vasil Lomachenko is dishing out to land his own shots. Vasil Lomachenko is the smaller guy, so Linares has that going for him. But when you're so su superior um, in your skill set, your fundamentals, your technique, and you're so confident in your abilities, a little size difference sometimes or most times won't matter. Now, Linares is going to have to be great. He's going to have to be great this Saturday night if he wants to defeat Vasil Lomachenko. Lomachenko, to me, doesn't have a very good inside game. And if Linares could rough him up on the inside, score some points, uh some some good, you know, good points, some very, you know, powerful thudding shots on Lomachenko to get the respect 
of Lomachenko that will bode well because you, as you all know, if you go back and watch um, Lomachenko's fight with Rocky Martinez, Nicholas Walters, once he gets in his rhythm, it is hard to figure him out and hard to stop him. He would shift um, right, left, left, right, rip body shots, rip the right hook. So, Linares is going to have to counter that. And with Lomachenko being a southpaw and Linares is being a you know orthodox fighter, he's going to have to be able to win that foot placement battle. And I don't know if he can win that, man. I just don't know. Watching all, all of the film on both guys, guys like Kevin Mitchell, Antonio DeMarco, you know, Luke, Cam Luke Campbell was able to hit, cut up, bruise Jorge Linares. And they don't have nowhere near the footwork of a Vasil Lomachenko. Vasil Lomachenko, excuse me. And I'm not saying that Lomachenko is a flawless or perfect fighter. But he's very, very, very good. I said it before. I said it again. I see weaknesses. On the inside, um, he's not the best defensive um, fighter as well. His footwork enables him to be better defensively um, because he has an he has exceptional footwork. Now, if his footwork were not as good as it is, then he'd be more hittable. But you know, it is. So that's why he's hard to really hit. But another thing that Loman Chico does as well, which is a big no-no. Even though he has his hands up and chin tucked, when he comes forward, he lean, he, like I said, he shifts from side to side, but his his head is um, linked over, you know, back is, you know, hunched. And if Linares pays attention, has been studying film, you know, he could be one of the guys to take advantage of that because of his exceptional hand speed. And if he could time that, you know, step to the side slightly, step back slightly, give himself enough enough punching space to be able to rip uppercuts, that'll be something that makes Lomachenko be cautious when he comes in. I don't think that Linares can outbox uh, Lomachenko. You know, um, he's really going to have to take the fight to Lomachenko in a smart way. But, he's, uh, but I think if I was him, I may be wrong. If I know I can't keep up with a guy who has tremendous foot speed, foot placement, footwork, then I'm using my other guy gifted abilities, which is my extremely fast hands. I'm going to sit back, buy time, and counter, look to counter every chance I get. And the great thing about uh, Lenares is that he doesn't have average hand speed or just good hand, good hand speed. He has very good hand speed. He's exceptionally fast. So what would be... A Luke Campbell or Nicholas Walters landing three, two or three punches on Lomachenko. Lenars can land four or five, six punches at a time on Lomachenko. And out of those six punches, three or four are going to land. So he's going to have to make each shot count. He's going to have to sit down on his punches. And he's going to have to be very accurate, very precise, and, and have perfect timing. Because Lomachenko is going to be in and be out. Lomachenko is great at turning his um, opponent. You know, he can, he's able to pivot, turn you, and make you pay. Lomachenko is also a very underrated body puncher. He loves to throw that right hook, straight left hand to the body, straight left hand up top. So... Lenares is going to have to be aware of everything that Lomachenko is bringing to the ring. And with all that being said, man, I think that this fight is going to be competitive early on, the first five or six rounds. But if Lenares cannot land anything effective, effectively, if he cannot fight like the bigger man, if he cannot impose his will, his strength, his size to go along with his hand speed, um, an athletic ability. I think that as the fight wears on, uh, Lomachenko is going to pull away, and I can see the blistering speed and accuracy of Lomachenko causing Linares to get cut multiple times, cut badly, uh, which indeed is going to discourage um, Linares. Linares is on record saying he doesn't quit. He won't quit. We heard that from 
Could have done more rookie deal, and look what he did. He quit over a phantom hand injury. But with all that being said, man, I'm gonna go with Vasil Lomachenko um, to win a unanimous decision. You know, getting his um, third title in his third different weight division. I just think that the foot, uh, the foot speed, foot placement, and, and everything is gonna be too much because you gotta be able to keep up with. Um, Lomachenko, and I just don't think that Lenares will be able to do that. The only guy that really matches the uh, the foot speed and just superior skills is Ricky Dial, and we've seen what happened. Yes, Ricky Dial came up two weight divisions from 122 to 130, um, and he was able to have some success. You know, Lomachenko early wasn't able to do as much as he did with the, the, the shifting and all that early in the fight, but as the fight wore on, he was able to tag the smaller you know, Ricky DL and, and, and bully him and and slowly uh take the fight the the fighting wheel from Ricky DL. I think that Lenares' size, um, his hand speed is gonna carry him, you know, early in the fight and then his his size and being a naturally bigger guy is gonna see him through um the whole twelve rounds where he will lose a clear uh unanimous decision. And we will see a new WBA and Ring Magazine lightweight champion in Vasil Hitek Lomachenko. Um, that's my prediction. If you disagree or you agree, drop a comment in the comment section below. I love for y'all to give me y'all feedback on what y'all see if I missed anything. Do what I told you to do in the beginning of the video. Head over to Facebook, like the Colossal Boxing Talk Facebook page. Find me on Twitter at ColossalCBT and follow me there. Shout out to everybody in the movement that's moving with us. Be sure to check out 3kingsboxing.com daily for your updated news. That's unbiased, unfiltered, reported the way it should be. Shout out to my guy, um, CJ, a uh, good fella over at the Boxing Clinic and more. Until next time, I'm out. Peace.